What's going on everybody, Kleepas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some of my favorite and least favorite things about the T-Mobile Revel 6 5G to help you decide whether or not this is the right phone for you. Now before we go any further, as always, I do want to remind you to hit that subscribe button. And in case you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So my first pro for the T-Mobile Revel 6 is the software. So with this phone, as you can see here, we are getting Android 12, which despite not being Android 13, is still at least decently good. Now, of course, if it's really important to you to get the latest version of Android, then this still is probably not going to be the best thing for you. But in general, when it comes to these more affordable carrier branded phones, a lot of the time their software really isn't the best. So overall with this phone, at least we are getting something decently newer. Whereas with maybe like Cricut, for example, the Cricut Dream 5G, which is a pretty similar phone to this, only has Android 11. And while of course, they also do have plenty of phones with Android 12, it just goes to show, even at this point at the beginning of 2023, not every entry level 5G phone is going to have even Android 12. So if you're maybe not too concerned about having the absolute latest software, but you want something at least decent, then you will be happy with the software on this phone. My second pro for the T-Mobile Revel 6 is the security features. Now with this phone, we are getting face unlock and a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key. So definitely a great spot for a fingerprint scanner. And while on one hand, having both of these options for pretty much any phone really is not uncommon. Regardless, it's always going to be nice to get more than one option to unlock the phone besides a pin. So I'm definitely glad to see that here. But with that being said, let's go ahead and give the fingerprint scanner a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So real fast and responsive there, no issues at all. My third pro for the T-Mobile Revel 6 is the processor. With this phone, we're getting four gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 700 processor. Now I have seen this processor in quite a few phones, but that's definitely not a bad thing because for what it is, this processor is actually really good. Sure, on one hand, compared to a much higher end device, the performance is not gonna be nearly as good. And if you're gonna be on your phone all day doing higher end activities like mobile gaming, for example, you're probably gonna wanna spend a bit more and get something a little faster. But for more basic daily activities like web browsing, social media, streaming, the occasional video here and there, and really just using the phone as a phone, for that kind of activity, I do think you will be happy with the performance we're getting here. And again, keep in mind, at full retail price, this phone goes for around $169. So in this price range, getting 5G connectivity is definitely not something you see every day. And honestly, considering the deals T-Mobile and Metro usually offer, you're probably not even going to be paying full price anyway. So in general, if you're looking for a really affordable 5G phone that also has really good performance too, then I do think this phone will be a good choice. Now, in case you're wondering, I did run a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on it, and here are the scores I got. So what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone and comparing your results to these, and that's going to give you a better idea of whether or not this phone will be an upgrade for you. But in general, again, for what it is, the performance is definitely not bad at all, and especially if you're coming from more of a lower end device, like maybe an older 4G phone for example, then performance wise, I do think this phone will be a solid upgrade. My fourth pro for the T-Mobile Revel 6 is the materials and general build quality. Now sure, on one hand, this phone is made entirely of plastic, except of course the glass display, so it's definitely not premium by any means, but at the same time it is more of a high quality plastic, and in general, the phone does feel really well built. So compared to other phones in this price range, that is quite an advantage because I want to say the vast majority of really entry level phones like this tend to be a little bit more cheaply built. And this phone also does have a decent amount of weight to it too, which definitely makes it feel a lot nicer. So if you're looking for a more affordable device that doesn't feel premium per se, but does at least have good materials and overall build quality, then I do think you will be happy with this phone. And my fifth pro for the T-Mobile Revel 6 is the battery. Now with this phone, we're getting a 4,500 milliamp hour battery that supports 15 watt fast charging. So sure, on one hand, at 4,500 milliamp hours, you can technically do a a little bit better, but honestly in this price range, not a whole lot of phones have 5,000 milliamp hour batteries. And in my experience, regardless of not having maybe the largest battery you can get, the battery life on this phone is actually still really good. So if you're using your phone a lot and you need something that's really going to last all day, then I do think this phone will be a good choice. And with the 15 watt fast charging, while of course not being the best fast charging you can get, the charging speeds are still decent, so you're most likely not going to have any issues there either. But now that we've gone over some of the good things about this phone, let's talk about some drawbacks. So my first con for the T-Mobile Revel 6 is that it doesn't have NFC. Now, in case you don't know what it is, NFC is the technology behind contactless mobile payment services. So if you like to use tap and pay, you will need a phone with NFC. And unfortunately with this phone, we're not getting that feature. And in this day and age, with NFC becoming more and more popular and widely used, I feel like it's a feature that every phone, especially a 5G phone should have. So in general, if you do like to use tap and pay, then again, keep in mind, unfortunately, you won't be able to do that with this phone. My second con for the T-Mobile Revel 6 is the display. Now, to be fair, the display isn't really all bad. At 6.52 inches with a 20 by nine aspect ratio, the size and dimensions at least are pretty good. The phone is a little bit on the larger side, so if you're doing something like reading or browsing the web, you will at least get a decent experience. And with a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, you're going to get a more immersive experience in landscape mode. Things are going to look a little bit more cinematic. 
And if you're doing something like reading, browsing the web, using social media, stuff like that, with a taller and more narrow form factor like this, you'll be able to fit more content on the screen without having to scroll as much. Now, that being said, although the size and dimensions are pretty good, the image quality could definitely be better. With a 720p resolution and a PPI of 269, while being, I guess, okay for what it is, it's still not going to be nearly as sharp as a 1080p resolution. And even though the colors and brightness are at least acceptable, if you're really going to be on your phone a lot, doing stuff like watching videos, playing games, and stuff like that where the image quality really matters, then I feel like you're probably going to want to invest in a slightly higher end device that has a better display in general. Another thing I do want to point out is that the viewing angles, as you can see here, are really not the best. So if you're outside in the sun a lot, this phone is going to be a little bit harder to see. So overall, for more basic activities, the display is definitely going to be at least decent. But if you're really consuming a lot of content and doing things where the image quality really matters, then you can definitely do better. My third con for the T-Mobile Revel 6 is the camera. Now with this phone, we're getting a 5 megapixel front facing camera. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 13 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. So in general, as far as features go, it's at least okay. It does have a macro camera, so I will give it that. But unfortunately, there's no ultra wide camera, and in this day and age, I feel like an ultra wide camera is more or less an expectation. In addition to this, for whatever weird reason, you can only use portrait mode in the rear camera and not the front. So in general, if you're taking a lot of pictures and you want a wider variety of features, then even in this price range, there are definitely better options out there. And for video, you can actually record 2K videos in the rear camera, but overall, if you're doing any kind of content creation, while the photo and video quality you get with this phone is really not bad for casual use, if the quality is a little bit more important to you, then you will want to get a phone with a better camera. My fourth con for the T-Mobile Revel 6 is the speaker. Now to be fair, regardless of the phone, a phone speaker in general can really only be so good. And if you're using headphones or an external speaker anyway, this of course really isn't even going to matter. But all the same, I feel like it is nice to have at least a decent quality phone speaker because when you get good audio from the actual phone itself, it does give you quite a bit more flexibility when you're consuming content. And with this phone, unfortunately, first of all, we're not getting stereo audio. So when you're playing media, the sound is only going to come out of the main speaker and not the earpiece. This is going to make things a lot less immersive. So if you're watching a video in landscape mode, for example, it's definitely not going to sound nearly as good. And aside from the stereo audio, I feel like the phone speaker just doesn't sound very good in general. So overall, if you are consuming a lot of content, I would definitely recommend using headphones with this phone. Now that being said, of course, audio quality is definitely more of a subjective thing. So I'm going to play a sample so you can hear it for yourself. So again, definitely more subjective. Maybe it actually sounded good to you, maybe it didn't. But in general, even for this price range, when it comes to speaker quality, I definitely have heard a lot better. And finally, my fifth con for the T-Mobile Revel 6 is the design. Now on one hand, the design we're getting here really isn't significantly bad. But that being said, compared to pretty much every other phone in this price range, it looks almost exactly the same. We got the typical thick bottom bezel and the water drop notch selfie camera. And honestly, by 2023, this kind of generic low-end design is really getting old. Sure, again, on one hand, it's definitely not terrible and most people probably aren't going to care that much about aesthetics anyway. But if you do want something that looks a little bit more unique and interesting, then this phone's design is probably going to be a little disappointing. But those were my pros and cons for the T-Mobile Revel 6 5G. In general, despite a few drawbacks, I do think for what it is, this phone is actually pretty good for the money. And if you're looking for an affordable 5G phone with a good battery, great performance, and some decent features for more everyday casual use, then I do think this phone is still definitely worth considering. Now once again, in case you want to learn more about this device, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.